It's no surprise that food today is getting more expensive. At least here in the United States, we're experiencing inflation. And many of us are asking ourselves, how do I eat healthy on a budget? How do I continue to feed my body and fuel my body with great food and make sure my family's eating well without breaking the bank? And that's exactly what I wanna share with you in today's episode. Some of my thoughts and strategies on how to make nutrition incredibly affordable and exactly what to buy for breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. And that's how I wanna approach things. In this video, we're gonna go through some of my favorite foods for breakfast, for lunch, and throughout the rest of the day, I'm gonna tell you what I recommend you do buy, different kinds of cuts of certain things, and certainly what to avoid. And I also, before we kick into the specific foods, I wanna talk a little bit about mindset when it comes to nutrition and cost. I think many people can just look at the box cost. It's like, how much does this box cost versus something else? And I think that's one way to look at it. We ultimately want a lower total number on the grocery bill. But it's also important to think about things in terms of cost per nutrition. So sure, buying wild salmon might be like $10 a pound. And you look at that and you bought two pounds, that's $20. And you compare that to maybe a box of some kind of crackers, which is only $5. The salmon seems more expensive. But actually, the crackers are not gonna fill you up whatsoever. They're filled with lots of empty calories, and the salmon actually has all these rich, healthy fats, vitamins, and minerals. So there's a mindset component here too. We both want to decrease the total grocery bill, but also look at how can we get the most nutrition for the least amount of dollar value. And that's a mindset I think is gonna serve you really well. And one final thing to say on that note before we get into the specific foods is the foods that have more nutrients will keep you full longer. We've all probably had the experience of maybe like drinking a bunch of soda or eating a bunch of chips and we just got like a thousand calories, but we're still hungry afterwards. The reason this is the case is because foods that don't have the right kind of key nutrients we need aren't as satiating for our digestive tract and our brain. So we wanna have high satiety foods, mostly non-processed and we wanna do it in an affordable way. So let's get into this. Let's talk about breakfast first. Whether or not you have breakfast, you intermittent fast, I think it's an important thing to have because even if you eat these foods later in the day, they're still super valuable. When it comes to having like good breakfast, I think one of the easiest things you can prioritize is getting good eggs. Eggs are absolutely a superfood in my opinion. And I'm not saying you need to eat like six or 12 eggs per day, but a couple eggs per day absolutely has health benefits. You get all that rich amino acid protein from the egg white, but I also want you to get that good egg yolk, which is filled with choline, vitamin A, D, E, K, fat soluble vitamins, so many good things. It's a nutrition powerhouse. Now the key to getting eggs is eggs can be fairly expensive based on the kind of quality that you buy. If you're buying eggs that are like pasture raised, humane, cage free, like that these days can I think be like $9 for a dozen eggs. But if you start to go to some of these bulk grocery stores, you can buy whole eggs in like big, like 24, 36 cartons for a lot cheaper price, or maybe even check locally. But I firmly do believe that a couple eggs, even if the cost is, let's say it's around 25 to 50 cents an egg, still can be a really good budget option. If you have three eggs for a breakfast, that's $1.50. It totally kicks the crap out of any pop tart or any kind of other pastry kind of thing that you might wanna buy or some kind of breakfast bar. You're getting so much nutrition that'll keep you full. And if you do have the money to buy up for some quality to get a really good yolk that's a little more orange versus yellow, indicative of more vitamins, it's even better for your health. So I love the idea of eggs. Other things you can do for breakfast is maybe consider getting some Greek yogurt or something like that in bulk. If in the morning, I'm a big believer in getting a good amount of protein in the morning. It's gonna keep you full, it supports a healthy metabolism, we combine proteins with good fats in the morning and keep the carbs a little bit lower, you're gonna benefit from that. So maybe you buy uh, an apple or an organic apple, you slice that up with some Greek yogurt and you have three hard boiled eggs, or maybe you use those eggs to make a little bit of an omelet and a scramble and you throw in a bulk bag of some baby spinach that you saute into a little bit of an omelet and maybe you get some cheese you can sprinkle in. I know you can get a breakfast that's certainly under $3 that's very nutritious and feels great. Another concept that may work for you, especially if you buy the ingredients in bulk, is to do breakfast smoothies and shakes. We're huge proponents of this and we recommend this a lot in our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs because what you can do, imagine if you did get some kind of protein powder that you enjoy, you put a scoop of protein, 20 to 25 grams of protein, you throw in some organic baby spinach, you throw in some frozen blueberries, and maybe you throw in some hemp seeds and some chia seeds and you blend that up, you're getting such good nutrition and I guarantee that's still gonna be a lower price in terms of both total cost and cost per nutrition and you have something that's consistent you don't need to think about. Where people get into trouble is they're buying all this weird stuff, stuff in specific boxes, pastries, this kind of bagel, that kind of thing, and a lot of that stuff just doesn't keep you full, doesn't have the right kinds of calories and nutrients. So for breakfast, again, eggs, 
omelets. You can make some kind of smoothie kind of recipe. Also, fruit. Oftentimes a good idea in the morning, especially if you can buy some kinds of fruits that you actually enjoy. Imagine having something like an organic apple paired with some kind of like nut butter. That could be a part of a good healthy breakfast. Now let's look at lunch. What kind of things can you do for lunch? And how can we actually make this practical? Well, on a healthy basis, some of the stuff that we recommend a lot in our meal plans is one, you can always do the kind of like salad with protein on top concept. So imagine if you did buy a bulk of some 50-50 spring mix baby spinach and you can buy that, maybe even organic. And I know if you go to like a discount score like Costco, you can get like big bags of this stuff. You have that in the fridge, you throw that in there and it's like the base of your meal. And now you can throw some protein on top. Certainly if you can go plant-based options, if you like tofu tempeh or something like that, that can work. But you also, you can use a tin of some wild pink salmon. I think it can be like $3 of tin and like you're getting a lot of good protein in there. Maybe you hard boiled a couple of those eggs and you slice those up and put that on the salad. Sprinkle in some hemp seeds or some chia seeds. Just the idea of protein and greens, drizzle with some extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, some spices, maybe some paprika, rosemary, lemon, absolutely delicious, nutritious, and you can get that salad to be under $5 for sure per meal. And that's way better than if you went and you bought lunch out at a place, it's probably gonna be at least $10, maybe up to 15. Another thing you can do if you do tolerate bread and you can have some bread in your diet is to get a high quality uh, organic sprouted bread. And if you're gonna do bread, I am a, a big believer of making sure that it is organic. I believe that these inorganic grains that are sprayed oftentimes with glyphosate, which is the pesticide in Roundup, we know that the health effects are terrible from those things on your GI tract. They can lead to autoimmune issues. And if you get a grain that's actually sprouted and has gone through that process, some of the anti-nutrients in the wheat actually go away and some of the vitamins become more bioavailable. So some of the breads that we do recommend and like is something like Ezekiel bread. It's often found in the frozen section. It is more expensive, but again, if you bought a five, a $6 thing of Ezekiel bread has 12 slices, like it's still 50 cents a slice. So it still can be reasonable. You're paying $1 for like the sandwich slices. And then you can throw some, all sorts of things in there. Some kind of like sliced deli meat, like turkey, ham, leftovers from the night before of some kind of protein source. Maybe if you wanna get fancy, a little more expensive, you can put a little avocado. And then the condiments that are great for these kinds of things are mustards, hot sauces, low sugar barbecue sauce. You can make a little sandwich that tastes totally delicious and is of good value. So I think the bread concept is really good. If you wanna have like the most uh, budget friendly thing and maybe for your kids who don't like to eat a lot of meat, then you can get two high quality pieces of bread, load that thing up with some like high, some peanut butter of some sort. You can get a big jar of that, ideally some organic peanut butter that doesn't have a lot of hydrogenated oils in there. And you could drizzle a little bit of jam or a little bit of uh, organic honey or something in that. And you have a PB, PB and J or peanut butter sandwich that is like very nutritious, can be great for you and is very low cost. So again, for lunch, I do recommend you either do the kind of like the sandwich style or the wrap style. You can add a piece of fruit in there as well for a little more filler, or you can do a salad with some protein, some of those hard boiled eggs or throwing some stuff on top. Very good. Now for snacks. Snacks are really where you can actually, you know, blow a lot of money on stuff that doesn't actually fill you up. The grocery stores, when you look at them, are designed in a particular way where they have the meats and the produce and the vegetables on like the outsides of the grocery store. That's typically where you're gonna wanna shop. The interior aisles are filled with all the, like the packaged box goods. And there is a huge industry right now for quote unquote healthy snacks that are super expensive that basically don't give you much of anything. And some of them are actually frankly totally unhealthy. So instead of buying prepackaged like dried this, dried that, chips of this, chips of that. I recommend you go to the classic like fruit and nuts style, style snack. So buy some pears, some kind of fruit you love, things that are good, oranges, apples, pears, a banana that still has a green tip on that, and pair that with some kind of nut that you love. Some of my personal favorites, although macadamia nuts are expensive, pistachios are expensive, I like those. But almonds, cashews, you pair like one serving of fruit with one serving of nuts and you make that consistent, your blood sugar will stay super stable. It's not something that needs to be refrigerated. You can take it absolutely anywhere. It is of good value, especially if you buy like a nut mix in bulk. And you can even like make some of the stuff on your own. You can go to like a website like nuts.com and buy like a lot of bulk nuts and do what I do. And you can actually like throw these together. I actually throw a bunch of nuts in a little pan with some walnut oil, heat it up a little bit. I throw a bunch of spices, salt, pepper, paprika, 
rosemary and maybe some like habanero and I just make like a nut mix and I have that. And it's like super good value. I'm getting a lot of good healthy calories, keeps my blood sugar stable, don't need to think about it. And I'm not wasting time and money getting like, like thin seaweed slices or kale chips that like are just super expensive and don't give you much nutrition whatsoever. Another concept if you really wanna get like, take control of your own snacks is to invest in a dehydrator. So basically a dehydrator is a little oven that cooks on low, low heat. You could also probably do this in your oven yourself. And maybe you buy some of these cheaper cuts of meats we're about to talk about as it comes to dinner and you make some own jerkies. You can get, you can make some beef jerky or some salmon jerky. You can dehydrate some fruits and stuff like that and make your own snacks. Over the long haul, that could save you some money because you're taking more of the stuff into your own hands and not buying as much for the markup of the packaging. Now, when it comes to dinner, one of the concepts we teach here, um, certainly on our channels and our podcasts and our programs, is the idea of building perfect plates. So I want you to imagine a plate of food, a blank plate, and half of that plate is filled ideally with some kind of green fibrous veggie that you love asparagus, steamed broccoli, sauteed spinach or chard, a Brussels sprout, something like that. A quarter of your plate is filled with some kind of protein you love and a quarter is filled with some kind of healthy carb or healthy fat. Now, when it comes to like the green aspect of it, one of the most affordable ways you can do it is to buy a big bag of baby spinach, throw that in a pan with some olive oil, throw some lemon, throw some garlic maybe in there and saute some of those greens down, boom, super cheap and inexpensive. Broccoli as well. You can buy broccoli in bulk or a big thing of cauliflower and you can steam that up. Throw some spices, some salt, pepper on there. Boom. Very cost affordable. Some of the other vegetables are a little more expensive. Asparagus is a little more expensive. Brussels sprouts can be a little more expensive. But if you make the focus of buying stuff that's actually seasonal, it's going to be lower in price. So paying attention to where the grocery store throwing different deals because they have a lot of stock on that kind of stuff, really good. And of course, buying local, your vegetables is a good benefit. Now the protein is I think a place where if you're including protein into your meals, like animal-based protein or like fish, chicken, steak, these types of things, there's certain cuts that you can do where you can save a lot of money. So the example, buying a whole chicken besides chicken breast, you can save a lot of money. And from that, when you cook that, you're gonna get the thighs, the wings, the breast, you're getting a lot more different types of cuts Chicken thighs and drumsticks are always gonna be cheaper than chicken breast. They have more natural fats, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? If you're eating this kind of healthy, structured way, having some fats from these things is not bad, but that can also save you some money. You could also buy some tougher cuts of steak, things that you might make into like a slow cooked brisket. Some of these sirloins, those are gonna be cheaper than if you were to get like something like a filet mignon or a ribeye, and you can start to slow cook some of this stuff. A lot of these meats are a little bit tougher or absolutely delicious if you start to use a crock pot. So imagine if you like you wanted to save some money, you bought some carrots and some root vegetables, some carrots, some sweet potatoes, you bought some celery, you bought some onion, and you bought some kind of like stew meat, and you threw that stuff in there with some stock in a crock pot for six, eight hours, and you come home, you have like a healthy dinner that's totally reasonably based. And again, that meal is roughly gonna be around three, four, five dollars per serving, as opposed to eating out, which is $20 a serving, and you're still getting good nutrition because you're buying like these single ingredient foods that are really good. And when it comes to carbohydrates, if you wanna include those as a part of your perfect plate concept, rice in bulk, super cheap. You can get many different kinds of rice that you may like. Sweet potatoes, tubers in bulk, super cheap. You can get a bunch of those, throw those in a pressure cooker, Instapot or oven, and have those as like a staple. And these are just like basically the message here is to simplify the types of things. You know, the mono ingredient foods, the fruits, the vegetables, the meats, the eggs, these are the things that are of the greatest value. It's the stuff that has the long ingredient list that requires a lot of marketing, a lot of packaging. There's a lot of markup that's really gonna be taking a lot of your money and it's the least healthy stuff anyways. Shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Start to change your mindset into like, how can I get the most value and nutrition for my dollar? And I know you can save a lot of money with these tips. So thank you, my friend. Hope you found this valuable. If you would like like a step-by-step -step done for you meal plan, and exercise and supplementation guidance and mindset coaching. We have our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs, which are the best programs online for busy moms and dads over 40. There's links in the description, you can check that out. And also if you wanna really try our stuff out, we have some free meal plans and workouts also linked in the description. I wanna recommend you check that out because we'll get into some other budget stuff. And in fact, in our full programs, we have a full module on how to make healthy eating on a budget even there. We also talk about alcohol and what kinds of things, how much can you drink there, the right kinds of supplements. So much good information, but most importantly, action steps for you to take. Hope you found this valuable, my friend. Thanks for stopping by today's episode. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi signing off. I'll talk to you very soon.